everybody realised that we were on a winning run. On the other hand, no one was any, under any illusions that there was still hard fighting to come. The Sertogenbosch operation was a key part of the strategy to clear the shelves and open up the port of Antwerp. Welcome to Sertogenbosch, Holland. It's October 1944. The city is heavily guarded by the German army. As the Allied advance bursts into Holland, supply lines are growing too long. If stretched further, vital supplies and reinforcements cannot reach the front lines. The Allies must open up the port of Antwerp for shipping. But Antwerp is unusable unless they first secure the River Scheldt, which is heavily fortified. The Sertogenbosch operation was part of a drive to clear the north bank of the Scheldt. If the attempt had been made without doing something about Sertogenbosch, the right flank of the operations across the island would have been exposed. The 5th Royal Inniskilling Dragoon Guards would be instrumental in the attack against the city. They would be supporting 160 Brigade of the 53rd Welsh Division. The Inniskillings were split into three groups. A Squadron, B Squadron and C Squadron. Each of these Inniskilling tank squadrons were assigned to support an infantry battalion will be following the action of A Squadron in the attack. Tanks can't do everything. The teamwork is, is, is crucial. The tanks provide close fire support to the infantry. Now the infantry have got to winkle people out of dugouts or buildings or whatever. And so they will move either to one side or with the tanks. So it was, it was classic infantry tank cooperation in an urban setting. It's dawn on the first day of the attack. A squadron prepares to advance into the small town of Newland. Newland, in fact, was the key strong point. The assault on Newland was absolutely critical to the success of the whole operation. But it isn't long before they run into trouble. A German minefield. For both squadrons, the same problems arose. Minefields and getting bogged. Uh, and everybody suffered from this because that was a, 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 a wetland area. The squadron hold the north of Newland, while C squadron take the bulk of the town. They opened fire on the defenders of the village. But they were met with a storm of machine gun fire and also mortars. The machine gun nests would keep on firing until they were assaulted with flame. They came out fairly rapidly then. With C Squadron holding Newland, A Squadron advanced to their second objective, Koistrat. During the fierce fighting and under heavy fire, a tank is lost. As dawn breaks around Sertogenbosch, A Squadron advance on the town of Rosmalen. A battle rages in the town as they come up against intense opposition. C Squadron suddenly spotted two German self-propelled guns and they'd obviously been sent to try and outflank A Squadron. So we loosed off and we managed to brew them both up and their crews leapt out. By last light, A Squadron has taken over 300 prisoners in Rosmalen. The ring is closing around Sertogenbosch. So there was a feeling of enemy morale crumbling and you're on the winning side. It's first light on day three. A squadron receive an urgent call for tank support. The East Lancashires need help in the outskirts of the city. Their infantry had moved forward at first light into the suburbs, north of the railway. And 
They were coming under very heavy fire. There are two options facing A Squadron. The first, travelling across open ground to the north of the railway, but it's bound to be heavily mined. The second option, to take the tanks along the railway embankment, making them a prime target for the legendary German anti-tank guns. The fearsome German 88mm anti-tank guns were remarkably effective. They'd go straight to a tank and they would take off limbs and, and kill people, just like that. So the 88mm was in fact the feared, the most feared weapon. With the lives of the East Lancashires hanging in the balance, Sergeant Archie Carr decides to lead his troop along the railway line and break into Sir Togenbosch. A Squadron's action uh, along the railway was really uh, quite extraordinary. They were launching themselves uh, down the railway line, which ran on an embankment. So they were silhouetted against the morning sky I'm sure that the Germans never expected anybody to do what they in fact did. It was only after the extraordinary dash that it's discovered all eight German guns had run out of ammunition. Pushing deep into the city, the Inniskilling A Squadron worked with the infantry to take and hold the last intact canal bridge. The gaining ground, the other side of the canal, actually began to signal the end of effective resistance. The tank support for the infantry became crucial in the streets in the middle. We actually had tanks who were firing with their guns of full elevation at windows of buildings on either side of the street to help the, the infantry to winkle out any German machine gunners, any German snipers, etc. It is through the cooperation between the infantry of 160 Brigade and the tanks of the Inniskillings that the Battle of Sertogenbosch was won. The whole German position amongst the islands began to crumble. The Sertogenbosch operation was a, a landmark because so much trouble had been taken beforehand to marry up with the infantry and to make this business of infantry tank cooperation uh, come alive and really work. The teamwork aspect was absolutely vital then and remains absolutely vital today.